Hey everybody and welcome to Vancouver Island Bushcraft. So I'm out on Mount Benson. It's uh, it's definitely winter time. Got uh, snow everywhere. I'll turn you around. This is what we got right now. Pretty much all <laughs> snow. So um, I'm going to be showing you guys how to uh, deal with adverse weather um, throughout the video. I'm having some fun too, of course. Um, one of the things that I uh, initially checked, of course, was the, uh, the weather. Went to the weather channel and uh, took a look, saw what the weather was going to be so I have an idea of how cold it is so I can dress accordingly. Uh, use technology to your advantage, obviously. Uh, we use ferro rods, we use modern clothing, you know, uh, lighting. Um, use technology and uh, the weather channel is one of those things. So I, uh, I made sure that I had lots of layers. I have them, my shirt and my combat uh, sweater. I have my inner for my jacket, my outer for my jacket and my vest. Uh, my, my toque, my um, schmog here around the neck, uh, which really uh, keeps the warmth in and some uh, those, those gloves that I showed you last, uh, last video. So um, I'm gonna make my way to the bivouac uh, through the snow here and uh, I'll uh, talk to you guys when I get there or maybe within the, time that I I'm walking here well guys there's definitely a fair amount of snow down here got the uh, SKS this is the time of year where the Cougars are um, fairly active uh, especially the time of morning too got to be careful not so much in the way of bears right now um, they're kind of sleeping a little bit most of them anyway but uh, yeah it's got to watch out for the Different things, you know, make sure you're protected and safe. Um, got a trail here. This would be, I think, a small deer going through there. Lots of wildlife around here on Vancouver Island. I don't know if you guys are aware of the way the temperature is around here. This is one of the places in Canada that um, doesn't really get any snow other than up on the mountains. Uh, we might get three or four days worth of uh, snow and uh, it'll melt and then it'll happen a couple times and that's about it. Only place in Canada that happens. Uh, it's very, it's kind of, it's called the Hawaii of Canada. So uh, up here, of course, there's quite a bit of snow because it's higher elevation. Um, usually stays around minus two, minus one, somewhere around there. And, uh, but the snow will melt um, and then uh, that'll be that. So I got a nice patch here of no snow. Looks like the trees above has stopped it. I wonder what the bivouac's gonna look like, eh? All right, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Another deer trail. Small deer. It's pretty important to uh, take it slow when uh, it's cold out and you're dressed really warm because you can overheat. And of course, in this kind of weather, moisture is definitely your enemy. Uh, you want to keep your shirt dry and it's actually worth you know it's slow going it's actually worth uh, if you start getting overheated just to stop let your body cool down a little bit and uh, keep going we're almost at the bivouac now the uh, the thing is when you're in a survival situation which of course I'm not I uh, I brought all sorts of stuff. I'm 20 minutes away from my truck. This isn't a survival situation. This is fun and training. But uh, one of the big things is, is when you're walking and you've decided to stop, whether it's overnight or for a couple hours and it's in the minuses, you'll find that uh, as warm as you are, you're gonna cool down really, really quickly. So your priority, of course, is to, uh, there's my tree mark, take a right. 
uh, your priority is to get a fire going as soon as you stop. You've got almost, uh, you have very little time uh, until you start to freeze um, and then you can't make a fire. Your hands won't work properly. A good indication of when your uh, hands are working properly is to, uh, sorry about the darkness there guys, is if you can touch your, your thumb and your finger together like this, then you're fine. As soon as you can't do that, there's a problem. So keep that in mind when you're uh, in the woods and it's cold and you start to shiver. Things start to become really difficult, uh, really hard to uh, collect wood, to cut wood, even to light wood. Uh, you have a certain amount of time when you stop walking that you're fine. You want to use that time to your best advantage and uh, get a fire going right away and then you'll be fine. Um, it's, uh, it's mentally good for you, it's uh, physically good for you, and uh, then you can start doing everything else. So um, I'm going to spin you around. Actually, I'll turn it off for a second here because i got my lighting all kind of messed up and then I'll, uh, I'm just about to go to the bivouac so I'll, I'll show you the entrance of the bivouac. All right, we're all back situated. I'm heading over the bridge. How's our water situation? Oh, we're good. Lots of water. That's excellent. I don't even have to worry about water anymore, of course. All right. How do you guys think the uh, bivouac ferried with the, the weight of the snow? Let's take a look. All right. No worse for wear. Everything seems okay. You can see the snow is on the table here. And that's an indication, like I said, with the, the rain, uh, that's how it comes in. Same with the wood pile. That whole wood pile there um, would be wet, full of rain. Really is a good indication of how I would repair this. Everything seems okay inside. How's the top? We're gonna have some frozen water pockets obviously there, but uh, it's holding up pretty good. Everything's dry in here. Got nice dry firewood. Bivouac or uh, the bed's nice and dry, no issues. Damp around the fire, you notice that it's right here. So the water is obviously coming down from up there, down to there, and going along. And that's perfectly fine. I don't need it to be dry there. I need it to be dry at my bivouac itself. The rest of it is uh, is just a plus. All right. Well, I'm going to. Uh, get all this stuff off and then I'll uh, get right back to you. All right, so I've shed all the uh, layers. I'm uh, pretty warm normally, so uh, I just have the stuff just to make sure, just in case something happened. Um, I'm good with uh, the, uh, the combat sweater. I might put uh, one more layer on after once I you know, make sure I'm totally cool. I'm not damp at all. I uh, pace myself perfectly. Um, one of the things I do when I come to the bivouac every time um, is I open up my backpack and then, you know, normally I show you guys what's in there. Um, and, uh, I do that every time. <clears throat> One of the biggest reasons I do that is so that I know where everything is. Um, case in point, those of you who have, uh, bug out bags or, um, you know, any kind of survival bag or whatever, without going into it, can you remember what's in there and where it is? Most people can't. So I use these bug out bags um, on my little excursions and constantly open them up, look what's in there, use the stuff that's in there, put them back. So I have a really good idea of what's in each bag. Um, it's important. Uh, you know, you could be in a survival situation and you can't start a fire and everything is going to heck and you don't realize that you have a, um, a ferro rod in uh, one of your pockets or one of your bags. Um, it, it, it happens. Uh, make sure you know what you have. It's, it's pretty important. Um, when it's cold like this, uh, a couple of things that you do want to do differently, uh, even at the bivouac here, uh, if I do an overnighter, which I'm probably going to be doing, um, you want to do a couple of different things. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So this, um, oh, sorry guys. So this uh, fireplace here, it's all fine and dandy for most situations. But I just got to change the lighting. Hang on here. There we go. Um, it's okay for most situations, but notice the distance between the fire 
and the bed. Now I have effective heat up to about here and that's it. So if it's cold like this and my sleeping system isn't at par or I have no sleeping system, say it's a survival situation, I want to make sure that my fire is no further than about here for my sleeping system. And also the way I have the fire is all nice with the rocks and stuff is safe and we can do things in the fire but if it's a survival situation you want a fire that's probably as long as this log if not longer. So you're gonna have a fire from say that post all the way down and all the way back and you're gonna pile it up four or five high and it's gonna be the length of your body or at least most of it. Um, it's important to make sure that you're warm. Uh, if you start shivering that's that's not good. So a couple things you do differently, uh, you know, dress differently, uh, the fire is different. Um, you want a hot fire, you want those embers to be glowing. You guys know when you're at a campfire or whatever and it's been going for a long time, I mean those embers are hot. Uh, the metal ring is usually glowing, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty warm stuff. So you want to make sure that that's all taken care of. Uh, you want to make sure you have plenty of water. Um, and that's uh, not so much a survival situation, but you know, if you're, you're stuck in the woods and you have the stuff that you need, your four categories, your fire, water, shelter, and food, um, make sure you have what you need and you, you're, you can survive. Um, it can get really cold at night. Um, one of the things that I, I've seen a lot of uh, bushcrafters do, and I wouldn't do this if I was surviving, it's the whole, um, you get the fire going, it's getting late, and then you're gonna go to bed. Well, if you have no bed system and you just have some cedars and that kind of thing, you don't go to bed. You stay sitting up and you let your body fall asleep. Uh, you're gonna get a couple hours of uh, really good sleep, uh, REM sleep, and you're gonna get up and you're gonna be okay. Uh, if you get away from the fire, lay down, um, there's no need for that. Uh, you just sit up, enjoy the fire, and when you get tired enough, you're gonna fall asleep uh, in the warmth of the fire. So you don't need to go to bed. Uh, that's, that's something I see uh, some bushcrafters do. They're gonna do like a survival night and it's really cold and they'll build a natural shelter. And uh, you know, it's gonna be late. And they go, okay, well, I'm gonna go to bed. I'll talk to you guys in the morning in a survival situation. And uh, they get up in the morning, they're just freezing. Like they've, they've gotten away from their fire uh, to try to do the whole bow survival thing. Stay next to the fire. Stay clothed, stay next to the fire, um, feed the fire, fall asleep. And then when you wake up, you just keep feeding the fire. There's no need to go to sleep. I'm gonna start a fire and um, I think I'm gonna have a coffee. I'll talk to you guys. In a bit. Hey, what do you guys think about the whole um, conversation about batoning with a knife seems to be a lot of I don't know conversation about it should you baton with a knife and shouldn't you and if it's your survival tool you shouldn't abuse it and that kind of thing um why don't we address that just for the fun of it I think batoning is 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 necessary uh to get down to uh the pieces of wood that you need to uh start a fire uh, lots of places in the boreal forest which is not here um, you have um, um, birch and birch bark and that kind of stuff. There's no need to baton. The stuff burns really well. There's no issues with it. Here, it's all coniferous and it's all wet. If you tried to burn, um, well, anything uh, that's just sitting there on the ground or branches without processing it first, you're not going to get a fire. Um, the guy from Survival Russia just does not like batani. He does uh, his, um, his um, Siberian fire, which is really cool. Uh, you couldn't do that here. There's no birch. There's, no, there's nothing to get those things going without um, processing the fire first, or process, processing the wood first. So having said that, I'm pro batani. So guys, feel free to give me comments on what you think. Um, but this is, there's, there's parameters. I use, uh, where is it now? Here it is. So I use these kind of knives. Whoops, sorry. I use these kind of knives for batoning. Okay, I do not use. <clears throat> Just one second here. I do not use these kind of knives for batoning. Um, this knife, I mean, it is a quarter inch thick and it's full tang. There's no way you're going to break this. It's C1 steel. You can baton with this without any fear of any damage. 
Moras, you don't want a baton with that. You want to make feather sticks and the like with that. So it really is a matter of um, what you baton with and how you baton. Do it properly. I've showed you guys how to baton before. It's, you know, uh, it's, there's a process to it, obviously. Um, so anyway, I was just processing some wood here and I remembered seeing on a recent video or two, this whole, you shouldn't baton with your main survival tool because you can break it. Well, that's why you got it. What else are you going to do with it? Seriously, you got a big knife with a small knife beside it, uh, which is what I carry. And I'm assuming you guys carry it too because you watch this channel and it's a smart thing to do. <laughs> what else are you going to do with it, really? Uh, that's what it's for. Batoning, uh, debranching, um, that kind of stuff. Protection. Um, so I, I'm going to keep uh, processing the wood here. I just wanted to have a little rant about this whole shouldn't baton, this batoning is useless type
Well, guys, it's it. I could keep blowing on it. Okay, so now I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to make the same feather sticks. And this time, the pieces of wood that I'm going to put on are going to be um, pencil lead and pencil thickness. Okay, so we're going to do this all over again. And we're going to do it with the proper size stick. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, so we're in a survival situation. And I attempted to start the fire the way I did initially. Large pieces of wood, really quickly batoned, uh, a couple of feather sticks, used a ferro rod, tried to get it going, didn't get it going. Now, if I'm in the woods and it's below zero and I need to get a fire going, and I failed that attempt with the amount of time it took to process the wood, I'd be shivering right now. So things would be getting pretty desperate because when you start to shiver, you can't do things properly, <clears throat> including starting a fire. So doing that can definitely cost somebody's life. Just take an extra five minutes and baton what you need, get it down to the size you need and get the amount that you need. Um, it could mean the difference between life and death. It's five minutes um, and you get a, a, a good pile of wood that you need. So I'll turn you around and show you what I did. This is about, took five minutes to baton the other stuff. This is about 10 minutes. So I'll show you here. So now I got a tinder pile, about twice the size. And I got six of these instead of three. I got some shavings and I got some small wood. And then I got the larger wood. So now I'm ready to go. Now I'm feeling confident that I'll start it up. And um, in a situation where it's below zero, maybe getting dark, um, you you can't cut corners and that, that's key so I'm gonna uh, get this fire going here Notice I have enough shavings, enough feather sticks. Um, I'm not running out. Uh, previously I did three feather sticks and they burnt off, well, pretty darn quick, didn't they? You'll notice I did do a base. This time it was, uh, it was bark. You don't want to start a fire and uh, on the ground, wet ground. I did enough sticks that I'm not running out. You see they're falling off to the side and a little bit. I'm not concerned. I have enough that I can just keep piling it up. <laughs> and if they go kind of haphazard, there's no scramble to get them back on the fire really quick because I'm running out of wood.
There we go. We have an established fire. Put the knives away. All right. So how not to do it, how to do it. Uh, it could be a matter of life and death. Take the time to do it properly. Get those sticks down to the size where they, uh, they need to be so that you can start that fire. Make sure you have enough of them. If you think uh, you need 10, maybe you make 20. It takes an extra 30 seconds, a minute or whatever, and you got yourself uh, a roaring fire. Could save your life. All right, got the fire going. Just want to show you guys now it's a little lighter, but it looks like around the bivouac. Got some pretty nice uh, snow. That's uh, going towards the path. There's the uh, the uh, bridge. It's pretty nice. At minus one or two, the stream isn't frozen because, of course, the ground is warmer than that. Plenty of water. There's a distance view of the bivouac. Seems to be doing pretty good. I'm about to do some uh, coffee and um, I didn't bring my canteen cup so I can't put it over the fire so I'm just going to use the stove that I brought with the pack. And uh, you always hear about these canisters, how badly they work in cold weather. Well, minus one. Let's, uh, let's see if it ignites with the igniter for one thing and let's see uh, how it works. Alright, I got it together here. Seems to be all right. Oops, forgot to put the little feet out again. <laughs> I always forget to do that. Of course, we have one obnoxious foot. Come on, seriously? Okay. <laughs> that doesn't bode well for the stove, does it? There's a negative for the stove. All right, let me get this water going. So it seems to work all right. Um, at minus one or minus two, it's got a really good uh, flame on it. I noticed it's not as powerful. Did you guys notice that? Like it's not as high. This is on full and it's not quite as high. So I guess the cold is compressing the gas um, more than uh, not. So I would imagine that the uh, volume of gas is not as much so it won't last as long. Uh, it's my guess. All right, we'll uh, boil this up and have some coffee. All right, so I didn't really think this through too much. I have just two small cups, a bucket. So I'm gonna try to put it coffee through this. But as you can see, <laughs> The filter is way bigger than the coffee. So, this could be entertaining. Alright. And I'm going to do it with the gloves on. Because when it's minus 20 or 30, you don't want the gloves to come off. And uh, everything's more difficult with gloves on. As those of you from Eastern Canada know. Alright, this should work. This should work. Oh yeah, this doesn't work. Yeah, this is gonna work no problem. Yeah, these filters work awesome. All right, let's transfer that into there. I can probably make another cup of coffee with those those uh, grains, I would think. Cover this up.
Everything's more difficult with the gloves on. I, uh, I've waterproofed these with the silicone spray, so I um, don't have to worry too much about getting them wet, but you don't want to get the liquid on them. Because uh, if they get wet, then they're no longer an insulated product, right? All right, so there we are. Got the coffee going with the gloves, no problem, no issues. Um, I'm not cold uh, at all. Um, I just I just don't get cold, but um, I have everything I need here to keep me warm. Um, something that um, to keep in mind when you have a, a situation where you're in this cold, and say you're somebody that's just cold all the time. My wife, she's just, she was here, she'd be cold. Doesn't matter how close to the fire, she should just be cold. She just has that sort of um, metabolism that she's just cold all the time but keep in mind that all these rocks here are um, are hot and at this point um, this fire has just been going for about half an hour 45 minutes so they're not crazy hot but I mean if you put one of these in the schmog you know the, the scarf thing and put this on your lap um, it'd be like having a water bottle um, it it'd keep you nice and warm um, also the um, the metal container here, fill it full of boiling water, and then you can take that and put it in your jacket. Um, also, keep you very, very warm. A um, couple of tricks to, to keep you warm in uh, weather like this. Um, uh, you know, layers, uh, the hot rocks, the water bottle, make sure it's sealed. You don't want to get it wet, obviously. Um, okay, I'm gonna have some coffee with my gloves on. Probably should handle the handles, but anyway. Uh, nice hot coffee on a cold morning. Awesome. All right. As you can see, I'll just kneel down here. While I was having my coffee, I was staring at the fire. I thought I'd point this out to you guys. As you can see with the fire, the uh, the patoned wood is pretty much gone, and I'm putting actual full rounds on there now. You can do that. You don't have to spend your entire time processing wood other than the length. Um, for your fire. Once you've got an established coal base, uh, you can start putting on just rounds and save yourself a lot of time. It's a little smokier. As you can see, the ends of the, um, of the uh, pieces of wood are, um, are smoking a bit, but that not, not enough to be a pain in the butt. So uh, yeah, once you get it going, and then from there, uh, you can start piling on as much as you want to. If I was cold, I would spread this fire out so it was like about three or four feet wide get her up to about two feet and I'd be sweating. I'd have to start taking clothes off. You guys don't want to see that. <laughs> All right, let's get Turn this off. Hey guys. All right, sitting on my spot. Having the coffee, coffee holder. <laughs> so I think what I'm gonna do for you guys in the next uh, couple of weeks is I'm gonna do a um, lost in the woods um, scenario and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have my normal day pack which I take hiking with me and my vest and uh, there's a trail I want to try that I've never gone on before so I'm going to uh, go on the trail and I'm going to start at around four o'clock in the evening it gets dark around 5 30. I'm going to keep going on the trail until it gets dark um, I've never been on this trail and then, of course, I can't get home at that point, and I'm going to have to make an impromptu bivouac um, and stay the night uh, without any bedding. I might bring the bedroll, because uh, remember last video, you can survive or you can thrive. Um, I'm not sure if I will or not, because if I want a normal day hike, I probably wouldn't have taken it. Um, if I think I might have gotten lost or I might not come back, then I would take it. But um, I think maybe what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll think about it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, we'll do an impromptu overnighter with just what I have on me and um, make it through the night uh, without any uh, uh, pre-planning of where it's going to be or what kind of uh, conditions it's going to be at. I think that should be pretty interesting. Give me any comments uh, as to what you want to see during that one. Um, my wife's not going to want me to do it, but um, I think it'll be entertaining for you guys. Um, I'm going to have... Uh, 
uh, my cell phone on me that has a GPS so I can go out and I won't know basically where I am after walking about an hour and a half uh, or so uh, but uh, I'll have the GPS now having said that if I fall and um, break the, the, the phone or the battery runs out even though I'm gonna have a spare uh, battery pack uh, I'm then at that point in the woods and I won't know where I am I'll have to backtrack out which might take a day or so to do so it should be pretty good um, I think you guys are going to enjoy it it's going to be a lot of realism uh, when I'm at the bivouac I can show you how to make a fire I can show you how to do different things but I'm at the bivouac I'm 20 minutes away from my truck everything's safe everything's good and that's how you practice that's how you practice doing all this stuff without any uh, any problems but um, I think doing it uh, you can imagine you're walking out into this wilderness just this here and you have what's on you your backpack and you have to make a, a camp just like right there it's getting dark you have to find the wood you have to make the camp you have to do this in a way that you're not going to freeze overnight um, it takes some talent um, I'm not going to be walking around until I find the perfect spot I'll just you know I'll have to just kind of go at it so let me know what you guys think the bivouac starting to melt <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> all the snow from the top starting to melt we've got some good heat retention in here this is a great um, a great way of keeping heat in with this, uh, this style of bivouac all right I'm gonna finish my coffee up before it gets cold and I'll uh, talk to you guys in a bit okay so we got a fairly good fire going here it's up there I would say it's what do you figure two feet high maybe two and a half feet high okay so this is where my fire is and this is where my bed is and where I am right now is the end so this is like this is the end of where I feel the, the, the heat and I'm pretty high up so I'm feeling the heat high up so down here I would have to be pretty much right here and it's one pace like it's one step away from the fire it was cold and I was to sleep on that bed and I didn't have any sleep system that was good for minus situations even with that fire blaring like that I would be freezing to death um, I'm about I would say a meter away one pace and uh, I'm feeling a good amount of heat I'm comfortable um, it's actually drying the, the ground nicely it would take no time at all for this to get nice and dry and uh, basically I would take logs like this and this would be the size of the fire and uh, I'd be toasty warm I'd probably just sit up probably just sit up like this right next to the fire like this just make sure I have something to lean on um, I'd set that up because I'm comfortable so my back wasn't sore and uh, I'm basically spread out and I'd have something on my back now it's just a piece of wood on my back which wouldn't make me very comfortable but I'd make sure I'm comfortable and uh, enjoy the fire my feet are nice and close so they will not get in any way cold my face is nice and warm um, everything is warm other than my left shoulder uh, I can easily um, go from this side and then switch around and go to the other side if I need to if I gets cold uh, or turn around like this and just now my shoulders nice and nice and warm and just stay like this during the evening during the night and um, when I'm sitting like this and I get tired I just fall asleep and as the fire starts to go out <clears throat> I wake up uh, maybe an hour and a half two hours later put the fire uh, the wood back on the fire and keep going and that's how you would uh, get through the night you get a, a few hours sleep which is all you need um, I literally only sleep a few hours a night anyway and uh, you wouldn't be cold there would be no uh, no problem with uh, being cold especially if the fire was elongated there would be no issue whatsoever so a new uh, a new part of my everyday carry, which I've been carrying now for about, I guess, about a week. I'll show you. Sort of a shelter situation. I have one of these emergency blankets, which I always carried, and the jute twine. Just in a package, and I have it in my cargo pants, which is kind of cool. One of the reasons why I now have a shelter system that I carry with me all the time now. It's, it's not intrusive. I can bend down. I can stand up. I don't even notice it. The way these pants are, they're on the side. But I just finished getting this <clears throat> really cool pocket boy from Silky Saws. And it's literally 
the size of your hand and has the same teeth configuration as the big silky saws. So with these three things, I can easily create a shelter um, without too much issue. Now I haven't tried this yet. I thought I'd try it with you guys. Um, I didn't bring a tripod, so I'm not sure I'm gonna set this up so you can see it. Maybe I'll just put it on the dirt, and give it a shot. I'm gonna uh, put the gloves back on. I'm gonna try to do as much as I can with the gloves on um, just to see what the adversities are with the gloves. So I'm gonna go over to this log over here. Maybe I'll just put you down. I'll put you on the ground here without too much issue. I hope that's not too far. Oh, sorry guys. I have to kind of bury the base. All right. Hopefully that's okay. All right. So let's see how this thing works on a on a log. So obviously you don't want to put your thumb on here because uh, that'll release it and bring it up. It's got different um, settings. But it's important because it's so small to keep your hand off of there. So it's good to know. This log is about, I don't know, what do you figure, four inches or so? So if I had to cut a log, well, I'd have to cut, like, what, probably eight to um, make a shelter. And this is a really good-sized log. i make a pretty scoop of shelter. I don't really need something this thick, I don't think. All right. So that cut through... It's about two-thirds of the diameter of the saw and uh, not too much physical effort. That worked pretty good. So this would be a good emergency saw to make a shelter with uh, normally be about half the diameter you'd use with a, a shelter post, like a temporary shelter post. So this would do actually pretty good. So this is a, a pocket boy from Silky. Kind of cool. All right. Hey guys. So I've been here now for about three or four hours. And uh, this is the first time I've been at the bivouac um, in an adverse cold uh, conditions. So this is what I'm getting so far uh, that's different than doing it in the summer or even in the fall when it's like a little bit cool. Um, the amount of wood that I'm going through is probably double. Um, so something to keep in mind, uh, and I'm imagining it's exponential. If I was to stay overnight, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be using uh, these small type pieces. Um, I would make sure that I had at least that thick or thicker. Uh, they last a lot longer, obviously, right? Because um, you have to keep feeding this fire with this little little uh, pieces of wood, which is fine, uh, three seasons out of four. Uh, when In the winter time, you need the big, the big pieces. They, they create more heat, better embers, that kind of thing. Um, my feet, um, I have um, hunting boots from Cabela's with a pair of uh, wool um, socks, and the toes are a little bit cold. They're not, they're not crazy cold, but um, I'm either gonna have to double up the socks, which I'm gonna try to, to do next time, or uh, get a pair of uh, boots that are specifically uh, for winter conditions. I'm going to try the, the two pairs of uh, wool socks first because they're not cold cold but I can tell after two or three hours of being out here if I was to be out here say for another two or three hours and not next to a fire my feet would actually start to be cold. These gloves are incredible. Um, my hands are nice and warm. I have good dexterity. Um, a little more challenging to do some stuff but these are amazing gloves. I've I have no idea what they are. I tried to look for the NATO number inside for you guys, but they're, it's worn out. And um, uh, they only have one more pair at, um, at uh, A Company in uh, Coombs. And I might go grab those uh, today, actually. So, sorry, guys. <laughs> um, what else have I learned here? Um, the melting of the snow on the, um, on the tarp, it, uh, it gets pretty intense with the heat. Uh, this is a pretty good fire we got going on here. And as you can see up here, uh, the water is just pouring down. 
that's something to keep in mind. If there's a lot of snow, you, there might be a water issue. It might, uh, when you come to the bivouac and it's already made, maybe dust off the snow first uh, if it's an issue. I don't know if it's going to be or not. Um, the gas uh, stove, uh, way less pressure. As you guys saw, it was on full and it was not like, remember when I did the test, it was like really high flame. It's not high flame. So I put it beside the fire, not close enough to be dangerous, but uh, enough to keep the, uh, the fuel warm. Uh, so that when I go to have some uh, some of the noodles uh, for lunch, uh, I'll be able to use it. Um, big mistake I made is I did not check how full the canister is. I think it's fine. I've only used it like three times, so it's probably fine. Uh, but I didn't check it. And the way you check it is you immerse it in water, and the uh, the higher it is, the fuller it is, the lower it is, the um, the uh, the emptier it is and there's a little chart that actually comes with them so I should you should do that before you leave every time because I have no way of making food on a fire like this um, I have two cups that are too small to cook anything well, I could I suppose then I have that one bowl you cannot expose the sides to fire so I'd be in a little bit of trouble food wise um, if that if I run out of fuel although if I do I'll figure out something I'll show you guys uh, that that's pretty much my epiphany so far with the cold weather um, the combat sweater uh, at minus two with just a t-shirt next to a fire is fine. If I was to be away from the fire, I'd have to put my jacket on. I put the, um, the schmog on and it makes a huge difference uh, with the neck. It's almost like wearing another sweater. Uh, it's, it's pretty handy. So that's about it so far. I'm just gonna sit by the fire, enjoy it. Um, try to keep track of how much wood I'm using. It's kind of a good uh, skill to have. And uh, probably in another hour or two, I'll uh, break out the noodles and we'll have some lunch and uh, maybe another cup of coffee and kind of go that route. It's still pretty cold out. It's not melting yet, uh, other than in this bivouac. Um, the heat retention here is amazing. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's bouncing off of that and then coming back and I can actually feel my back pretty warm. So, but mind you, look at the size of the flames. I mean, <laughs> I'm keeping them up pretty big. I mean, what the heck, right? I'm, I'm not trying to save wood. I can just go get some more firewood. I got that little saw and it'd be nothing to get some more wood. So I'm just having some fun, right? So those are my epiphanies so far. Yeah, you can see at this point with the fire, um, it doesn't matter what you put on it now. The fire is literally, um, will, will catch anything on fire right now. You even notice that, uh, like this is soak. It's actually wet and it's on fire. Um, at this point, if you're in a survival situation, you can literally now take logs off of the ground, tap the snow off and put them on the fire and uh, your fire will just keep going. So something to keep in mind, uh, you know, when you're, or in an area where there's limited firewood and you figure that uh, there's no way that the wood on the ground is going to catch it'll catch no problem and plus you can you can grab the the wood and put it around the fire and let it sort of dry as you're going but again as you can see uh, this fire is burning wood that is literally dripping with water and uh, it doesn't matter the, the coals are so hot now that it's just it's just exponentially just uh, lighting and I could make this as high as I want to with wet wood and literally I'd have a six foot fire if I wanted to. So um, it's pretty much carefree right now. It's just a matter of uh, making sure that I have enough wood. You'll notice because of the size of the flames and the amount of wood that I'm putting on, and I'm, just, I'm doing that because it's colder out and I wanna see uh, what the radiant heat is uh, with this kind of fire in this kind of temperature. And um, this, this height of fire is actually perfect. Um, and I'm not that far away. Like you can see, I'm, I'm right here and it's just right. Like it's not too hot, it's just right. So uh, that's a lot of firewood. You'll take a look here. This is my firewood bundles. And I only got about maybe 15 pieces of firewood left uh, from the bundle. And it was about this high when I first started here today. And so I'm using up the firewood pretty good. That's something to keep in mind because if I was at that low of firewood and it was one o'clock in the morning, that could be a problem. So um, you want to have it in your head that um, uh, you know this kind of fire this height of fire and this is not even a wide fire. This is just a rounded fire um, If it was wider say twice as wide maybe two and a half three times as wide you're looking at three times the amount of wood That's a lot of wood So um, yeah, you want to keep warm at night um, Your main priority when it's light Get that firewood cut and get it beside the uh, the fire and make sure you know how much you need the larger the pieces the longer they last obviously the smaller the pieces obviously they're not going to last that long so um yeah in about um i would say in about an hour and a half i'm gonna have to start cutting firewood and um if it was dark that would be a bad thing you know there's a, a temptation when you're sitting by the fire your feet are a little bit cold to 
have your boots and just put them right by the fire like that. Get your feet nice and warm. Well, when I was about, um, I think I was about 20 years old, I had Canadian combat boots on. I was by a fire and they were wet. It wasn't cold, they were wet and I was trying to dry them off. And I uh, had them about, about that close. And um, they were there for about an hour and a half, nice and dry. So I go to put them on and the entire toe of the boot, I'm talking this much, the whole thing literally just disintegrated. The, the leather had burnt off. You can imagine if you're in a survival situation and your feet are cold and you put your feet next to the fire to get them warm, by the time your feet feel the warmth, your leather has, um, has been compromised. So um, it's okay to keep them close-ish. Like I would say, right, right about here, there's a good amount of radiated heat that keeps your feet warm, but uh, use a lot of common sense. Another thing too is try to keep them off the ground. Um, right now my feet are fine. I've, I've kept my foot there long enough that they're nice and warm now. And then what I'm doing is I'm keeping them off the ground. I'm keeping them on this piece of wood here next to the fire and um, yeah, nice and warm. So right now I'm not cold at all. There is nothing cold on me. I have a nice warm hat, got the schmog, gloves, just the, 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 the sweater. And um, I'm making sure that my uh, leather boots are not compromised. If they were and I had to walk out of here, it's only 20 minutes, I mean, I could do it. But imagine if I was a couple hours out. Uh, that would be a, a really bad survival situation. So keep that in mind. Um, don't compromise your boots. If your feet are that cold, take your boots off and then put your feet next to the fire, uh, warm them up, and then put your feet back into the, um, into the boots. And that's, that's the best way to go. Okay, so now I've got a couple of um, larger logs on here. They're about three feet in diameter and uh, they're just on top of the embers. Um, this is just to show you uh, how much better the larger logs are once the fire is going. The fire is a little bit smaller, but it's twice as hot. And um, I'm not going to change the size of the, the rocks in the bivouac to make a larger one, so I just basically have them on top, and they're kind of sticking out on both sides. But you can imagine, they got the main flame here, if it was set up so it was a longer fire, if that flame was all the way over here, and then all the way on the other side, um, it would be the perfect um, fire to keep going. And logs this size, you're probably looking at about an hour and a half, two hours worth of fire um, without doing anything. I can literally walk away from this fire right now and um, come back in an hour and, and, and everything will be uh, good to go, really hot. Um, so that's kind of the progression you wanna do. Um, get her hot and then start using the big logs if. Um, if you're going to spend the night yeah, so you're nice and warm. Um, I'll show you what these look like in about an hour from now and um, you'll see that uh, it's now um, a very low labor uh, fire. Um, it'll just keep glowing. Um, the heat is right now is just actually incredible. Um, I got to back up a little bit and you can see the flames aren't that high. It's just it, everything's just glowing and that's what you want. Um, you basically have a fire that's under control and um, I could literally just sit here and, and go to sleep for a couple hours and I'd be nice and warm. Okay, so I've, um, I've taken this rock here from here and put it right between my legs to see what kind of radiant heat. It's incredible. My, um, my whole inside of my legs, all here, crotch area and stomach um, uh, is actually hot. Uh, this hot, this rock is uh, too hot to touch. Actually, um, with the gloves, I felt the heat go through right away. This will radiate heat for a long time, and um, yeah. So now I have heat here that um, I can keep warm. I can actually keep my my shoes warm by doing this. Keep my legs warm. Um, this hole now is a, a source of heat. It's coming out now like this, as opposed to coming up. It's also coming out, so it's coming this way, and the heat from the rock. So um, the uh, two logs are creating a, an immense amount of heat. The removal of the rock um, is causing an undercurrent of heat. And uh, this rock here is um, literally so hot um, that my entire lower body now is uh, warm. And uh, once that's cooled down, you're probably looking at, I don't know, maybe half an hour realistically that it's gonna be warm enough that it's, it's gonna do anything. Put that one back, bring another one out, and um, you could literally do that all night and stay incredibly warm. Um, this thing is, is hot. It's hot. I'll show you the, um, the heat, the way it's, uh, let's wipe that off for you guys. The heat, the way it's uh, 
being utilized with a bivouac. I'm coming to the back here. And uh, you can see there's no snow up to about this level here. And uh, you can see the, the, um, the tarp moving. And that's from the heat waves. So we're getting a fair amount of heat uh, escaping from uh, here and here, but it's still coming down to the point where um, we get a fair amount of heat. Um, to come over here, the heat is actually down to this level here, um, which is around thigh level on this area. Um, very good uh, heat retention. And that's uh, with a fire that's not overly huge. Um, so it's, it's working out pretty good. Uh, again, I wouldn't sleep in the, in the bed. If it was cold, I would get closer to the fire, but it's actually, uh, the heat is actually uh, being retained pretty good. So on this side here, it's actually down to here. Down here it's cold, but from here up it's actually warm. And when I step in here, uh, when I'm in the bivouac here, um, I feel warm. Like it's, uh, my face feels warm and all that kind of stuff. There's a fairly good amount of heat. Uh, being retained in here. Um, the uh, fire is doing good. I haven't added anything. I've just been uh, picking off the the um, the bark and putting it on top, just playing around. But I haven't added anything uh, to the fire. I want to see what kind of heat retention uh, we're getting with this. Uh, so far, it's just as hot as the high flame fire, uh, maybe more so. Um, I'm just going to leave it for a little bit, and I might add some more firewood just for the because I like to have a nice high. All right, I just filled up my GoPro, so now I'm using my phone. <laughs> uh, so like I was saying, I'm just gonna, I'll probably add some more water, uh, some more wood, um, just for the fun of it. But um, this is the kind of fire you definitely want. Uh, it's very warm. Um, um, it's a good learning curve. Uh, this is one of the first times I've been out in the winter um, as, a, as an adult, uh, uh, doing this to make sure that uh, when I do it for real, there's no surprises. Um, well, that snow's hitting the tarp pretty good. It's starting to melt up top and it's, it's all hitting the, the tarp. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to start making some lunch. It's getting on. Um, I'll add some more wood to the fire and go from there. Yeah, I'm standing here and uh, my feet are right here and that hole right there is radiating heat to the point and I'm pretty far away. I'm right at the table. I'm standing right at the table. I got my um, more soup thing going on here. But anyway, um, I'm standing here and this hole is keeping my legs and feet so warm. Um, actually, my, my, my pants are so hot that I had to move away from it a little bit. So that's an interesting little thing there. Make a move and move the, the, the stone and make this basically channel. And all the heat is like following the dirt and hitting right at my feet. These two large um, logs. I added another one there. For the fun of it. Well, this is the concoction I ended up with. I ended up putting too much water in here. Um, so what I did is I just added the, um, the uh, four cheese mashed potatoes. So I have <laughs> creamy Parmesan sidekicks with mashed potatoes. And uh, it's really fucking good. Hmm. That's actually a really good idea. All right, I'm going to finish that up, and um, I'm going to sit. Um, I'm going to sit right here on the ground next to this hole and have my lunch. And it's going to be nice radiating heat, um, and it'll be nice and warm. Uh, fire's doing great. It's still just all one big glow. Um, that's how we want the fire to end up for sure. Um, that was some good training, I think. Okay, so... I was sitting here next to the fire right here and I put the hot rock behind me and leaned against that um, piece of wood here hot rock there me sitting here and the fire radiating this way and um, I'm uh, let's see it's one two three four feet away maybe five I was so warm I had to get up so um, this thing's pull pushing out like crazy BTUs right now and uh, I was sitting here and um, the, my whole front was so warm enough I had to get up I you know I had to stand up and uh, this rock 
at my back was radiating heat all the way up my back. It's still really, really hot. It's been about an hour now and it's still hot. I can put my hand on it just, but it's still radiating um, a crazy amount of heat. Uh, it's pretty neat. This, um, this mashed potato and pasta dinner, wow, it's pretty darn good. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, finish up my dinner and uh, I think I'll just sit here and by the fire and just enjoy the rest of my time here. I'm going to stay here for another hour or maybe two, get some of that firewood all burnt up and then head out. Um, I'll talk to you guys when I'm just about to head out. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna enjoy some lunch here. I'm just gonna turn you around, sorry about that. Well guys, that's about it for today's adventure. Heading back. <sighs> that was pretty fun. So, I think I've learned a fairly large amount about uh, cold weather um, survival this is only the first time I did a little bit last year but uh, I had no skills really last year but uh, I'm gonna do it once or twice more probably and then see if I can do it in a more realistic situation if you guys have any comments or suggestions that uh, I haven't thought about feel free to uh, give me a comment on that well I guess that's about it just walking in the woods here beautiful now it's in the plus now it's like plus two probably and uh, everything's dripping and it's kind of nice so uh, I'll talk to you guys next time on Vancouver Island bushcraft and uh, you guys subscribe if you haven't subscribed and a few subscribers I'm so grateful for you guys we're at uh, 270 I think now so anyway I'll talk to you guys uh, next time